A manometer measures the pressure exerted by a confined gas. On the left we have an open-end manometer and on the right a closed-end manometer. In each case our confined gas is in this bulb. On the left, since that's an open-end manometer, this top stem is open to the air and of course the air pressure is exerting a downward force on the surface of this liquid. On the right we have a closed-end manometer in which this end is sealed and we have a vacuum here. There's not air in here, it's a vacuum. The height of the liquid, typically it's mercury but it doesn't have to be, I've written it as mercury, that height difference is going to give us a relationship between the pressure of the confined gas and the air pressure and we have a height difference of course in a closed end manometer as well. For open end manometers this equation applies small plus height equals big. Let's say you have a small quantity I'm circling it here with my laser pointer and you want it to be equal to a bigger quantity you're going to have to add something to the small quantity in order to make that happen. In this equation the height difference is right there. So the height is always this and then either the confined gas pressure is small or it's big and then the air pressure is either small or big. We will go through an example of that. I'll just tell you that as the picture represented here on the left we would say that the confined gas pressure is the big pressure and the air pressure is the small pressure because you can imagine the confined gas pressure pushing down on the leftmost surface of this mercury right there. Clearly it is winning the pushing war with the air which is pushing down on this surface. So the confined gas pressure would be the big pressure, air pressure would be the small one in this case. Closed end manometers are much simpler because we have a vacuum at the top of this stem where the sealed end is. The pressure of the gas in the manometer is simply equal to the height of that liquid column. Let's do an example. The atmospheric pressure is 96.5 kilopascals. The mercury height difference is 233 millimeters. Find the confined gas pressure in atmospheres. We've represented this problem using this diagram. This is an open end manometer so we're going to use the small plus height equals big equation. Obviously the 233 millimeters of mercury is the height so that term is taken care of. Now who's the big pressure and who's the small pressure between the confined gas and the atmosphere? Look at the shape of this mercury. You can see that the confined gas is pushing down harder than the atmosphere is. Therefore the confined gas is the big pressure and the atmosphere in this case is the small pressure. Let's follow up what we have with the equation. The small pressure is 96.5 kilopascals, the height is 233 millimeters of mercury and that's going to equal the big pressure which is what we're asked to find. So this is a simple addition problem. The only problem is that the units don't agree. Because we want our final answer in atmospheres, let's convert the other two pressures to atmospheres. One atmosphere is 101.3 kilopascals. You could look up that equality. In essence what I'm doing here is putting a little conversion factor right in there. I don't have room to stuff it in so I'm just kind of writing it below but kilopascals in the numerator cancels kilopascals in the denominator. 96.5 divided by 101.3 gives me 0.953 atmospheres. We're going to do the same thing for millimeters of mercury. One atmosphere of pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury. The units cancel and 233 divided by 760 is 0.307 atmospheres. Now all the units agree. We simply add these up to get 1.26 atmospheres. Let's summarize manometers. A manometer is a device that measures the pressure of a confined gas. We talked about open-end manometers, which goes according to this equation with regard to the math, small plus height equals big. We talked about closed-end manometers, where the pressure of the confined gas is simply equal to the height difference of the liquid column. And then at the bottom, we've shown you that not all manometers look like bulbs 
with stems coming out. Sometimes they look much more subtle as in this differential manometer. There's a manometer you can see on this gas tank and we don't have to fill them with mercury. We can fill them with any liquid we want.